how many grams of sodium hydroxide must be added to 2.0 liters of 0.19 molar nitrous acid to produce a solution with a pH of 4.80. We need to realize that this particular reaction is the reaction between a strong base, sodium hydroxide, and a weak acid. Know also that anytime you react any acid with any base, we're going to get a salt, which is, in this case, sodium nitrite and water. Because we're going to partially neutralize the acid, and it's a weak acid, we're also going to end up with the salt. And these two will be in equilibrium. That will be the second step of our problem. And we'll need to see what the pH of that equilibrium system is. Okay, so first of all, um, we need to see how much sodium hydroxide. That's going to be our X. We don't know how much that's going to be. And this is before. By the way, this will be our initial moles. And the sodium hydroxide must be the limiting reagent. It's going to get used up. So um, as it goes, the change in moles is going to be minus x. That's totally going to get used up. So our final moles for sodium hydroxide will be 0. I'm just establishing that now. Um, I'm going to act for now like I have one liter, and that will make things simpler for us. And then we'll change it to the grams later. So we're going to start off with 0 0.190 moles. And it's going to go down by X. Let's put that in the right place. So what we're going to end up with is 0 0.190 minus X. The sodium nitrite, we don't have any at the beginning, but it's going to go up that same amount because we have a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's actually going to be X at the end, and then water, we're not going to concern ourselves with that. So that's what's going to happen after the reaction. We want to solve for X, and um, it asks for grams, so we'll change it to the amount of grams later. So what we have now is a buffer. We have a buffer system and we want to do our calculation with that. So here is what results. We're going to have our acid and it's going to be in equilibrium with our salt. I'm going to go ahead and write this as a net ionic equation. Sodium's not going to be um, significant here. So the nitrous acid is going to turn around and react with water, be in equilibrium with the conjugate base, the common ion nitrite, and you can see that the water is going to accept the hydrogen and become hydronium. So we already know what pH we want. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to drop down my initial concentrations and I'm going to start with my nitrous acid that I ended with in the reaction between the acid and the base. So that's 0 0.190 minus X. Again, water we're not going to be concerned with. The NO2 is going to be X the hydronium, again, this is before the equilibrium occurs. For mathematical purposes, we start off at zero. But we're also given the pH. So uh, right up here, it says pH of 4.80. That was my mother. Okay, so um, we're going to use this assigned pH of 4.80, 
So we're going to convert that into a hydronium concentration. So naturally that's 10 to the minus 4.80. That's how much that's going to go up. And that turns out to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5th. So those two are equivalent. Our nitrous acid is going to go down that same amount because, again, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. So that's our change. Okay, and so at equilibrium for the acid, we've got 0 0.190 minus x minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth. You can see that the 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth is really small compared to the acid. So we can neglect that in that case. And then for our conjugate base, it's going to be x plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth. And for our hydronium, it is 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth. That's what we end up with. All right, so now we need to do our Ka and equilibrium. So um, Ka equals, we want to write out the expression, the common ion, nitrite, that's our conjugate base, times our hydronium concentration. We know both of those. And then our acid. Um, this is going to equal the value, you look that up, it will be given, it is 4.5 times 10 to the minus fourth. So now we're going to plug in all these values into our equation, 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth times x plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth divided by 0 0.190 minus x minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth. When we just do our algebra and distribute out this entire part of our expression, we see that we get 8.55 times 10 to the minus fifth minus 4.5 times 10 to the minus fourth, then we see we have a very small number, 7.2 times 10 to the minus ninth, that's insignificant. And on the other side, 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth x, plus 9.2 times 10 to the minus 13th, that's really insignificant. I'll do the distribution of this in a second, but what this could help us see is that these two values could really have been just canceled out in the previous expression. So now let me go ahead and distribute and solve for x. Distribute and solve for x, we get 0.18 moles per liter for x. We're not quite done with the problem because we were asked to solve for 2 liters of solution and we want to know how many grams. So the molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40.0 grams sodium hydroxide per mole of sodium hydroxide. We can see that we've got 0.18 moles per liter Of solution and we wanted to add this to two liters of solution. This turns out to be 14.4 or with the correct number of sig figs, 14 grams of NaOH would need to be added to our original solution to get a pH of 4.80 that we originally wanted.